when you see a good dividend, that can be a great thing. When you see a really big dividend, that can be a bit of a warning. Mm -hmm. There's a reason that people are paying a whole lot more than the U.S. Treasury. U.S. Treasury right now, 10-year Treasury, seven-tenths of a percent. So if you can get a couple of points, a couple of percent in a dividend, we think that's pretty good. I like sticking with some of those blue chips, the names like maybe Raytheon, Pepsi, Procter Gamble, Johnson & Johnson. You get a close to 3% dividend out of those, and I'd rather be with those balance sheets than some companies that are going to struggle in order to maintain cash flow and find ways to pay those dividend holders. Sure. And uh, Steve, Michael just mentioned names that have also been relatively steady. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything this year is relatively speaking. A lot of people are concerned not just about the dividend going away, but also the yield is so high because the value of the stock has been uh, has declined so much or may do so again in the future. Right. So I agree with all of all of Michael's picks. I, I always like hearing Michael speak. But when you look at these names, a lot of these names, not the ones that he's mentioned, but some of these names like a Verizon or a telephone are, are seen as safety bets. So people rush into them as the market is collapsing. So they're looking for a safety, not necessarily a dividend, if that makes sense. So when sure. you look at a telephone, it's down 23 percent for the year, but it yields 7 percent. So a lot of these names you know, you could see why they're yielding so much, but they're not as safe as you would think. So when the market starts to recover or the economy starts to recover, the cyclical bets will run and these safety bets will be sold off. Sure. So you sort of have a double edged sword and you get and you get cut by both of them. A name I'm in, Trinseo, T-S-E. This one has been clobbered. It's down 50%. But the company just came out and said that they're behind their 8.5% yield. And last quarter was its trough quarter. This is a company that can double, triple, or quadruple if the economy recovers and you're getting paid the yield while you wait. All right. So, Michael Farr, make the case for maybe staying in one of the more stable names that might have a higher valuation, might underperform as things start to reopen. Well, I, I think if you listen to what Steve said, too, I think he was talking about some of those other names that have uh, more of a cyclical bent to them that have those. The, the names that I mentioned probably are a little bit more stable, will continue to execute. But they, they really haven't gotten beaten down. Uh, owning some of the other balance sheets that have gotten beaten down, names that have suffered some, maybe like a FedEx, maybe like a Disney, uh, where they can certainly recover as the economy recovers. They'll benefit from that, and you get a dividend, too. You're probably going to get better performance. These other companies are performing and executing. The, the other thing is that when you get back into a growth mode, I'd rather that the company keep my money and grow it at, if they can grow it at 20 percent rather than returning me 2 to 3 percent of it, where I have to pay taxes on it. Let the growth company keep it and grow those monies. Uh, right. This is a safe core, and I think still you want to be safe.